Hi, I'm Kitta Andrews. And I'm Kitta Alexa. And you've tuned in to the Super Kid Academy. We're live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Get ready for a special transmission from Commander Kelly herself. She is going to teach us through the Word of God that if God is for you, who can be against you? With Jesus on your side, Super Kids, you always have the victory! Cadet Hannah, I am so thankful for you. First Chronicles says to give thanks to the Lord. That's right. What is one way that we can give thanks to the Lord? Um, saying thank you? That's right. Well, Super Kids, we can also worship. I do not lie. I am always quick to tell the truth. I do not steal. I am a tither and a giver, not a taker. My father makes me wealthy. Hey Super Kids, it's Miss A and Gabby here, and today's lesson is on generosity. You guys, it's so important that we trust God in everything. Have you ever noticed that on our American money that it says, in God we trust? Do you want to show them the money? Let's see. On this American money, it says, in God we trust. And it's a great reminder that when you give your offering to the Lord, that He's going to take care of you and that He is going to supply all of your needs. So Gabby, why don't you tell them what the Bible says about this? Okay, so the Bible says, Philippians 4.19 says, Your God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Jesus Christ. 
You guys, that is so true. God is our father and he is your father and he wants to take care of you. And you know what? He gets excited to provide you with all of the things that he needs and all of your desires. So the next time that you need a new coat or I don't know, Gabby, is there anything that you need? I need new shoes. New shoes. So just remember you guys, as you give in faith, all of your needs shall be supplied. Super kids, don't go away. It is time for one of the most scientific, funerific times ever in In the Lab. Goggles, check. Lab coat, check. I'm Captain Reggie. And I'm Cadet Brayden, and it's time for In, in the, the Lab. lab. This next experiment is going to be next level. You bet. We're going to be making a seven layer density column. Cadet, what supplies do we need for this experiment? You need honey, corn syrup, dish soap, water, vegetable oil, rubbing alcohol, and lamp oil, and a flavor baster. Okay, so we're going to take each of our liquids and pour them into the cylinder. We're going to start with our honey. For this one, you need to pour it straight down the middle. Don't get it on the sides. Otherwise it'll mess up how it all looks. Right, it'll stick and the other liquids will stick to it and it just won't work right. Okay, so that's good there. Okay. Next, we'll take the corn syrup. Cadet, if you'll pour that in. Again, we're pouring that right in the middle so that it doesn't stick on the sides. We went ahead and colored our corn syrup so that it can be more easily um, differentiated from the water. Very then we're going to add some dish soap. Same thing, right down the middle. Ooh, that looks pretty. Okay. All right, this is where things change up a little bit. Now we're you... going to use our baster, cadet. So you just absorb all the water into it. You're gonna pour it down on the side of the... Go oh, on the side. And that's going to go on top. Okay. okay, now vegetable oil. Right, we're gonna do the same thing with the vegetable oil. Add that. Ah. Here, let me squeeze it out of the bottle. And we go. And again, when you're using a baster, you wanna put it along the wall of the cylinder and let it drip down from there. Okay. Okay. And after the vegetable oil, we need to rinse out the baster before we move on to the next um, ingredient, which would be the rubbing alcohol. So we're going to rinse off that baster and we'll be right back. And we're back with our baster. It's been rinsed out. So we're going to take the rubbing alcohol and do the same thing with that. Suck it up into the baster and there put it go. into the... Ah. Here, let me do what I did last time because that seemed to work better. There we go. I'm going to turn it right like okay. this. Go ahead and add that. Okay, go ahead and add. Again, we colored our rubbing alcohol so that you could see the difference The difference between it and the water. And now you need to rinse this out again, right? And once again, we need to rinse out the baster. Okay, we're back and we just finished rinsing this out one more time. Now we're going to add our lamp oil. Wait. Squeeze it, put it in, slowly take it out. Ooh! All right, Fancy and once bubbles. again, you're adding this along the side of the column wall. Okay. And I think that's okay. good. And you should be able to see seven distinct layers in this. Captain Reggie, here's our seven liquids. Why don't they mix? The science secret here is density. Density is a measure of how much mass is contained in a given unit volume. If mass is a measure of how much stuff is in an object or a liquid, then density is a measure of how tightly that stuff is packed together. So, the stuff is packed differently based on the different liquids? Yes. Lighter liquids like water or rubbing alcohol are less dense or have less stuff packed in them than the heavier liquids like honey or corn syrup. Every liquid has a different density number associated with it. Water, for example, has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. 
And the reason that these liquids don't mix together is because they all have a different density. You know, Cadet, seeing the different levels of densities in each of these liquids reminds me of the different levels of our spiritual lives. Each level of liquid is like a new level of glory. 2 Corinthians 3.18 in our Super Kid manual says, But we are all with an open face, beholding as in the glass of the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Super Kids, God is always taking us higher and moving us forward to new levels of glory. There's always something more to learn from Him, and there are always greater things we can do with Him and new levels of glory to receive from Him. Just like there's always something new to learn from God, there's always something new to learn in, in the, the lab. lab. Hey, super kid. You know, I know that sometimes circumstances and things that are going on seems like it, they're just going to win. Like we can't overcome it or I don't know how to deal with this or my friend is mad at me and I don't know how it's going to get better or somebody is sick or somebody, even the, the things that you're seeing on the news today, I know that sometimes it seems like I don't know how this is going to get better and I'm afraid or or I'm hurting, or whatever situation you're in. But I want to encourage you today, because the Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? There's no enemy that can come against us. There's no thing that can make us fail if we let Jesus do what he was called to do and be our Savior. So I want to talk to you about that today, because you know the Word talks about at one time, we were afar off. We were far away from Jesus. We were far away from His righteousness. But here's what I love. Even though you may be, you might feel like you're far away from having victory or you're far away from being healed or far away from feeling better. Maybe you're just so sad or upset or scared and you feel like, I don't know how this is going to get better. You may be afar off, but God didn't wait for you to come to him. He sent Jesus to us over and over and over. In fact, I've read it several times today, just in my own study about the fact that God sent his righteousness to us. He says it in Isaiah and he's really saying it right here in Roman. It says God chose us for his own and he has given us right standing. What's he saying? He's given us his righteousness. He sent Jesus to pay the price for uh, uh, us to be called righteous. And so down here it says, can anything separate us from that kind of love? Can anything separate us from Christ's love? So I want to compare this to being saved, to having a lifeguard by the pool. So have you ever seen a drowning victim and they're, or not victim, but somebody who thinks they're drowning or is drowning, they're flailing and there may be people right here, but they don't see that. They just see, I'm in trouble. I can't breathe. I can't swim and I'm scared. And what happens? In comes the lifeguard and they save the person. Or if the lifeguard um, is not close enough or whatever, or can't get in there fast enough, or if, they, if it's not a safe situation for somebody to jump in, they'll throw a life preserver. Well, that's what God did for us. He threw God's love to us when he gave us Jesus. The Father, the word says that Jesus was his love expressed to us. So our Savior came at us. And I love this in Roman. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he doesn't love us if we have trouble or calamity or if we're hungry or if we're alone or in danger or threatened with death? But despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, our Savior, our lifeguard, the lifeguard of our life. So no matter what's going on, we have that kind of victory. We can swim. You know, we just put Jesus around us and we swim. That's all we got to do. But he's the one who came to us, right? He came to us. We don't have to go hunting for him. All we have to do is say, okay, Jesus, I belong to you. 
okay, Jesus, I'm not going to worry about all these things. I'm going to let you deliver me. I'm going to let your love take care of me. So here's what I want you to remember, super kid. Nothing, 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 nothing you're dealing with right now can ever separate you from the love of God. Do you know why? It's because no matter what's going on and no matter what you're doing, His love is always coming your way. Lieutenant Commander, what are you doing at the beach? Hey, Cadet Deb. You know what? I just heard about your vacation and I was like, I need a vacation. That's great. Hey, we are going sailing after lunch. Do you want to come? Sailing? Yeah. Uh, you know? What? I don't think that's it. Um, so sailing and being in like the boat kind of, it kind of rocks back and forth, which makes Yeah, it's fun. <sighs> Kind of goes back and forth. Okay, I'm gonna need you to stop that. It really like upsets my oh. stomach, you know. Okay, but Lieutenant Commander, don't worry. We have an anchor on the boat, and whenever the boat stops, we put the anchor down, and then it stops the boat from moving. Kind of like we're anchored in victory when we trust in Jesus. You we will what? never be moved, no matter the winds or the waves. Wow, you are so right. When we trust in Jesus, the wind and waves they don't bother us. We just keep floating where we need to be. That's right. So does that mean you're going to come? I guess so. Let's go. Ahoy, matey. Ahoy! Hey, super kids, you have tuned in to Back to the Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 17 in our super kid manual tells us the Bible story about David and Goliath, and it goes like this. The Philistines gathered their armies for war. Saul and the Israelites gathered in the valley, and they camped there. They took their positions to fight the Philistines. The Philistines had a champion fighter named Goliath. He was about nine feet four inches tall. Goliath stood and shouted to the Israelite soldiers, Why have you taken positions for battle? I am a Philistine and you are Saul's servants. Choose a man and send him to fight me. If he can fight and kill me, we will become your servants. But if I defeat and kill him, you will become our servants. When Saul and the Israelites heard the Philistines' words, they were very afraid. Goliath came out every morning and every evening. He stood before the armies, and this continued for 40 days. Now, Jesse sent David to his brothers who were at the battle. He sent him with food and said, See how your brothers are doing. Bring back something to show me that they are all right. David took the food and left. When David arrived at the camp, the army was going out to their battle positions. The soldiers were shouting their war cry, and the Israelite and Philistines were lining up their men to face each other in battle. David left the food with the man who kept the supplies. Then he ran to the battle line and talked to his brothers. While he was talking to them, Goliath showed up again. He shouted things against Israel, just as usual. And David, he heard this. And when the Israelites saw Goliath, they got scared and ran away. David asked the man who stood near him, What will be done to reward the man who kills this Philistine? Why does he think he can speak against the armies of the living God? The Israelites told David what will be done for the man who kills Goliath. David's older brother heard David talking with the soldiers and got upset. He asked David, Why did you come here? Who's taking care of those few sheep of yours in the desert? You came down here just to watch the battle. David asked, Now, what have I done wrong? Can't I even talk? Some men heard what David said and told Saul. Saul ordered David to be sent to him. And David told King Saul, I will go and I will fight this Philistine. Saul replied, You can't go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're just a boy. But David said, I have been keeping my father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came to take a sheep from the flock, I would chase it. I would attack it, hit it, and kill it. I have killed both a lion and a bear. 
Goliath will be like the lion or bear I killed. He will die because he has stood against the armies of the living God. The Lord save me from the lion and the bear. He will also save me from this Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Saul put his own armor on David, but David wasn't used to all this armor. And he told Saul, I can't go in this. I'm not used to it. And he took the stick in his hand and chose five smooth stones from a stream. He put them in his pouch and held his sling in his hand. He went to go meet Goliath. At the same time, Goliath was coming closer to David. Goliath looked at David and he saw that David was only a boy. And he looked at David with disgust. He said, do you think I am a dog that you come at me with a stick? Come here. I'll feed your body to the birds of the air and the wild animals. But David said to him, You come to me using a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. He's the God of the armies of Israel. You have spoken out against him. Today the Lord will give you to me. I'll kill you and then all the world will know there is a God in Israel. Everyone gathered here will know the Lord does not need swords or spears to save people. The battle belongs to him, and he will help us defeat all of you. As Goliath came near to attack him, David came quickly to meet him. He took a stone and put it in his sling and slung it. The stone hit the Philistine on the forehead and sank into it. Goliath fell face down on the ground, and David took Goliath's sword out of his holder and killed him. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. The men of Israel and Judah shouted and started chasing the Philistines. Thanks for tuning in to Back to the Bible. Most people know the phrase, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. But do you know the history behind it? Well, check it out in The Real Deal. Hebrews 6.11 says, We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end, so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Today we are going to learn about someone who showed this kind of diligence in his life. His name is Christopher Columbus. He is known worldwide as the man who discovered North and South America. Columbus was born in Italy in 1451. When he was between the ages of 19 and 25, he worked on ships learning how to sail and to navigate. After this, he began to study mathematics and astronomy. Because of his newfound knowledge, Columbus believed that he could make the voyage to Asia quicker and safer by finding a passage to the west at the same time. Europeans had to sail all the way around Africa to get to Asia. So in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. But it wasn't all that easy. He struggled to raise the money for the voyages, but he kept on trying. Since he never gave up, he was able to make four trips to America that changed his life and the lives of others. Because of what Columbus did, you and I are able to live in the United States today. We have been learning the Super Kid Creed, and one of the lines of the creed says, I am diligent and I am not a quitter. Christopher Columbus lived this line out when he refused to quit raising money for his voyages. Super kids, when you decide to be diligent in what you are called to do, you will see a change in your life and in the lives of those around you. You're about to enter a zone unlike any other, a place where normal life becomes anything but. This is the place where eternal choices are made, where faith meets fear and boldness meets hesitation. This is a zone where kids can become history makers or bolt like a runaway train. So buckle up your seatbelts and get ready for the ride. You're about to enter the witness zone. Wow, why is it so, why is it always so crowded? I know I never get a seat to myself. Look, there's, there's, there's another person getting on a bus. I think it's Deborah. 
let's put uh, let's put the bag next to us and hog up all the space so Deborah can go find a so Deborah can go squeeze into another space. Yeah, I want my own space for once. Go away, Deborah. I don't care if it's three to a seat. What you just witnessed was witness own door slamming shut. When Tracy agrees with Luke, Deborah has to find somewhere else to sit. Sometimes when you make a selfish decision, it affects other people. But let's see what happens when Tracy makes the right decision. Wow, why are there so many people on our bus? <sighs> I know I never get a seat to myself. Oh look, there's there's another person getting on my bus. I think it's Deborah. Let's let's put the bag and hog up all the space so she can go sit in another spot. You know, having my own space sounds nice, but it's already really crowded up the f at the front. I'll tell I'll tell Deborah she can come and sit by me. What? Are you sure you want to go get squished the whole ride home? I'm sure. If it was me, I would hope that somebody would open the bus for me. And there you have it. Another open door, another victory. A challenge given and a challenge bet. When Tracy puts aside her selfishness, she offers her seats to Deborah, and they become friends. This is a zone that challenges every super kid to ask themselves, what will I do the next time I'm in the witness zone? It's time for Pop Quiz. What did Tracy do for Deborah on the crowded school bus after school? Tracy gave Deborah a snack. Tracy encouraged Deborah to sit by her. Tracy let Deborah borrow her Nintendo Switch. Or Tracy gave Deborah her toy. That's right, Super Kids. Tracy encouraged Deborah to sit by her. Philippians 4:19 says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Queen Esther, King David, Father Abraham, or Christ Jesus. You know this, super kids. The answer is Christ Jesus. What do the seven levels of liquid in the density column represent? Fruits of the Spirit, glory to glory, the rainbow, the wall of Jericho. If you said glory to glory, you got it right. What lands did Christopher Columbus discover? The Americas, North and South America, the North and South Pole, North and South Korea, or Northern and Southern California? Good job, super kids. It was the Americas. How are we anchored in Jesus when we trust in Him? Through love, joy, victory, or peace? We are anchored in victory. If that was your answer, then you got the victory. In Commander Kelly's message today, she taught us that we have a lifesaver, and our lifesaver is Jesus Christ. He's our Savior and lifesaver. He's always close to you, super kids. You can always reach out to him, and he is there to help you. Lieutenant Aubrey, I am so thankful that we are anchored to victory and not by a gross pirate ship. Me too. And if you tune in next week, you might even learn how to ride the waves. You know I'll be tuned in. Super kids, you better be there too. Signing off. Super Kid Academy, you are ordinary kids do extraordinary things. Signing off now. Thank you for watching Super Kid Academy at Eagle Mountain International Church. Kids, get your parents' permission and visit us on Instagram, Facebook, or at emic.org. We'll see you next time at Super Kid Academy.